Hi guys, today I'd like to share with you some thoughts on selling to a captive market that's there where you are. My name is Carl from Buzz Website Design and it's our job to help you reach more potential customers, typically through your online marketing channels such as your website and your social media. So okay, what do I mean by captive market? Well, I don't know about you, but um, I go to the cinema here and there. When you go into the cinema, you buy your ticket and you go through, and almost in every single cinema, they've got a food, they've got popcorn, they've got drinks, uh, sometimes they'll sell t-shirts and stuff like that, etc. It's almost always overpriced. The margins on this stuff are really, really good. But what they're effectively doing is to trying to sell to a market that actually can't really go anywhere else for what they have to offer at that time. And that's what I mean by a captive market. People who are there and aren't going anywhere could easily be sold to. A classic example is having sweeties next to a checkout counter in a supermarket. Now what brought this on is I've just literally come back from holiday, it's the first day back in the office, and we've been to a place in southeastern Spain called Mahaca, which is a very long beachfront and there's lots of gift shops and uh, holiday stuff shops and uh, t-shirts and yes I bought the tacky tourist t-shirt uh, while I was there but the point is this they are selling to a market that's going to be there for a little while effectively it's a captive market and they are selling things that are trying to enhance the experience of being in that resort now one of the things that uh, is also uh, particularly highlighted on Mahaka Beach is there is this beach bar uh, slash club called Maui and it's apparently it's famous all over Spain for being a hot spot on the beach for young people to go clubbing and Maui sell Maui t-shirts, the Maui bar sell Maui mugs and all sorts of bits and pieces because they know that when people go there they're an easy market to try and sell to because they want to go to Maui and they want to let the world know that they've had this experience at the Maui bar so the number of young people wandering around in Maui t-shirts, Maui bar t-shirts in Maui is high because they want to go back to all their friends, they bought the t-shirt while they were in Maui um, and want to go back to their friends and say that they've been there. But from the Maui bar point of view, it's an easy sell because they've got this captive market who are there, they're enjoying the experience and will probably buy stuff if it's put in front of them. So this gets me thinking, how on earth can we apply this to our own businesses um, here and wherever it is you are, even if you're not a beach bar like Maui, even if you're not a resort like Mahaka, what, what is it that you can do? Well, a lot of it, to some extent, is to do with um, what I've said before in previous videos about cross-selling. Are you making sure that you can sell all the things you possibly can to the people you already do business with, or all people who already come in to your business? It's a bit like um, trying to sell cake to people in a coffee shop. A lot of people, if you try upselling them with a cup of slice of cake, a number of people will actually do that. They will actually go ahead and buy, and you'll increase your sales and your margins as a result. And that is a classic upselling um, to a captive market. If you do run a shop, for example, is there something that you can do to encourage people when they buy something to buy something more or buy something unique just because they're, just, just because they're there? Now the great thing about this is, I mean, well, you don't have to run a bar like Maui, which is famous and has been there for a long time. People come from all over Spain just to go to Maui bar and a lot of them buy t-shirts. A lot of people go to Mahaka, a lot of Spaniards and a lot of them will buy the t-shirts, buy the Mahaka hats, the Mahaka mugs, the fridge magnets, etc. Et you don't have to go to such lengths. But there's an, example, there's, there's an example here whereby if you've got people coming to your premises or spending time in your office or doing business with you a lot, is there something you can sell to them because they are there and because they're not going to go anywhere in a hurry? And that's one of the reasons why uh, petrol stations don't just sell petrol. When you go in to pay for your fuel, there's a whole heap of other stuff that you, they can sell to you, and it's a captive market. They've got you. You're there. You're going to stay there until the transaction is complete. What else can, it, can they sell to you? Now, I appreciate that when you run an office-based business like ours, um, it's a bit difficult to do. So I'm going to put some time and thought into looking at what we can do as a web design and online marketing company uh, to try and get this... Um, um, captive market working for us, even if it's just you know selling more copies of our book, um, even if it's just perhaps you know offering an additional service or perhaps a replacement service to people who don't buy a website from us. Uh, and so we're having a look at what can we do to the market that's right in front of us, that's already in some ways transacting with us, to perhaps sell them something 
if not more. So hopefully that's got you thinking a little bit about captive markets and up, uh, and upselling slash cross-selling um, based on an experience from my holiday. Um, but again, if you have any questions on this or any comments, please write them below. We answer all questions and comments on our videos, on our blogs. Um, but either way, if you like this video, please subscribe. There's a little link at the bottom left-hand corner, well, my left, your right, um, of the video. And YouTube will let you know when we do one of these, which is roughly once a week. Anyway. Thanks a lot for watching and bye for now.